Hi, welcome to my new office. I've moved to a new location this week. If you're one of my clients seeing me in Denver, I can't wait for you to check out the new space. I'm so excited to be with a great new group called the Lakeside Integrated Health Team. And uh, yeah, excited to provide the same great service that I always have from this new location. And if you've been watching my videos, you can look forward to this spiffy new background. So today, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be talking about um, a question that I get a lot because I talk about detox a lot with my clients. And as you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I also record a lot of videos about detox. And a large number of people that I work with in my practice are women who have maybe hormonal issues, uh, potentially also hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. And we talk about detox as a way to help support hormone balance. You can check out some of my other videos. In fact, I just recently did one all about uh, do toxins interfere with hormones. So I kind of gave away the answer, but yes. But you can watch that video to find out more. But one of the um, questions that I get a lot is, what is the difference between different kinds of detoxes? Specifically, what is a liver gallbladder detox and is it important to do this and why would I do this okay so it's a great question and as I said in fact I actually get this question a lot from uh, many of my female clients who have maybe even had gallstones or gallbladder issues and so they might be doing some of their own research on the internet or in holistic health books to try to understand um, if a gallbladder flush or a liver flush is one of the natural ways in which they can better support their gallbladder. And this is a really good thing to be thinking about because unfortunately if you go to your doctor and get a ultrasound on your gallbladder and it indicates that you do have gallstones, nine times out of ten your doctor is just going to refer you for surgery. That's not a great idea. We need our gallbladder. Our gallbladder is really responsible for secreting the bile that goes into the channels of the digestive system to help break down and help us absorb and digest and assimilate healthy fats from our diet. So if you don't have your gallbladder, you can have a lot of long-term problems with digesting fats, not to mention a lot of discomfort because fat is in so many of our foods that we eat and healthy fat is such an important part of a really well-balanced diet. So I'm going to explain some stuff to you today about a gallbladder flush or a liver flush. Okay. Well, all right. So the question is, can I do a gallbladder flush or a liver flush and will it help me to get rid of gallstones, right? Because if you've been diagnosed with gallstones and you are concerned and don't want to have surgery, this might be the question that you're asking yourself. So yes, there is a way to naturally remove them. Um, it does depend on the size and the seriousness, right? Like how severe are these gallstones? But if they are, you know, minimal and typically, you know, look like they're passable, maybe from imaging on your ultrasound, which I should state, again, I'm not a doctor. I do not diagnose, treat, or cure. But this information is supposed to help you have an alternative view and education and information about something that you can continue to research on your own and make the best decision for yourself and in conjunction with your healthcare provider, okay? Um, a lot of times, and I'll, I'm gonna use myself as an example, if you have gallstones, they're teeny tiny, and you may have a lot of them and they may be causing you some issues, but nine times out of 10, we can get rid of those guys all on our own. So they're usually typically small enough to pass but you probably want to talk to your doctor and see if this is going to be the right approach for you. So depending on the size and the severity, this is a really great way is to do a liver cleanse or a gallbladder cleanse. I um, mean, you should consider this again because it's much less invasive than going for surgery and removing your gallbladder. So for myself, I've had gallstones. I was diagnosed actually at 42. Seemed like a lot of things happened to me in that year, but in addition to, you know, my heart surgery and some adrenal fatigue and some other things going on, my hormones started to change and I was having a lot of digestion issues and I also had gallstones and I was like, oh my God, what are they going to tell me next? Like, I probably got to have my, my gallbladder removed. I knew I didn't want to do that. So 
you know, in addition to having some pain under my rib, which is a common place um, for people who have gallstones, like kind of right under your rib line, you might feel like some pressure or some pain. Mine felt kind of like a thumping feeling. It was very strange. Um, I also had some weird other symptoms that I knew were hormonally related, like I was getting some acne and I was also having irregular periods. So sure enough, my gallbladder was full of gallstones and I decided that I was going to spend some time learning about and reading about and researching a gallstone flush. Okay. So what happens is basically that you get these tiny, tiny, tiny little stones fill up the gallbladder and they can sometimes go into the common bile duct and and cause a blockage. Okay, so they're a little like rock like that's why they call them stones. They look like a rock. Um, and they are comprised of calcium salts and cholesterol and bile. Bile is typically yellowish or greenish so gallstones may actually look yellow or green. Um, and they can be teeny, teeny, tiny, or they can be as large as a golf ball. In my research, I found that actually one person had a gallstone the size of their fist, and I don't even know how the heck that would fit in there, but it, it's possible. That's probably not when you're going to pass naturally on your own. But little guys, you could give that a try. All right, so if the bile ducts and the gallbladder is filled with gallstones that can block bile from flowing into the small intestine. And that's, as I said, needed for proper fat digestion. So really important, right, that you can get bile flowing. Without this necessary bile, um, a host of other issues can start to, to come up. And so I talked about sometimes, you know, it might be like hormonal imbalance, etc. cetera. But um, if you are not able to utilize fat from foods, that can affect a variety of other issues. So what bile does is it's kind of like sort of like a degreaser, okay? It, it helps to emulsify fat, meaning that it breaks it up. It kind of breaks up the little chunks of fat from the digestive process, and it puts it into little droplet sizes. So another thing that you can do if you have digestive issues with digesting fat is to take a digestive enzyme, all right? And I've talked about some of the different ways you can improve your digestive function, taking lipase, is one of the ways in which you can really support your total digestion, but as well as to support maybe a kind of a wimpy gallbladder if you're dealing with gallstones. So you could check out adding some lipase to your supplement regimen during mealtimes, especially during meals that contain a certain amount of fat. So that's a little bit of a digression. All right, what do we need to know next? So, all right. If we are able to utilize fat properly, guess what else we're able to utilize properly? Fat-soluble vitamins, which can be more easily absorbed in the small intestine. So if you don't have bile, you, because you have, you know, gallstones in the way, or for whatever reason, your liver and your, your gallbladder are not working together properly, and there's no bile, it means that you're not getting proper fat absorption, and you're also not getting proper fat-soluble vitamin absorption. So bile also assists the body with detox. So bile also helps the body to remove waste. Um, and so there's a variety of different wastes that are actually attracted to bile. Um, but one of the main things is that bile also helps to support the removal of unwanted, kind of the bad cholesterol that you hear about all the time if you've got too much of that circulating around and around in your body and no way to remove it, that can cause elevated blood cholesterol. Okay, so the other thing is that bile can help the body to remove bilirubin. So there's a lot of different things, you know, that we won't get into too much right now, but it's important to know that in addition to helping you break down fats and utilize fat-soluble vitamins, bile is also part of detox. All right, so I've gotten through that. So, do, 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 do. here's the next step. What would be some more symptoms of gallstones? I want to go over this because um, sometimes people wonder, like, do I have gallstones? Do I need to go see a doctor? So I wanted to give you some of the kind of top uh, symptoms. I already explained the pain underneath, underneath your right rib cage. Mine felt like a thumping. Um, you might also have pain in your shoulder blade, which is kind of weird, but like, kind of on your right sides because your, your gallbladder is on your right side. So it could either be under your rib or you might actually feel it 
under your shoulder blade, which apparently a lot of people do. You may have noticed some changes in your hormones, like I mentioned, like I had. Um, acne is one of the things um, where the maybe the lymph nodes along the neck are not being kind of cleansed um, because the bile is not there to help remove toxins from the body. Um, let's see. You may also have, again, bloating or nausea after eating a meal that contains fats, even healthy fats like avocado or nuts or seeds or olives or olive oil. So you eat, say, like a salad with olive oil salad dressing and you feel terrible, right? And that was actually one of the first things I noticed was that I couldn't eat a lot of healthy fats without feeling like I was going to throw up. Then I started feeling the thumping and then I also noticed well, a lot of other stuff was going on. And as I said, that was during my crazy year that I had my heart surgery. So, you know, I was kind of used to it by then. So if you have extreme symptoms, you probably need to get to the doctor because what you don't want to do is pretend like you're going to do this cleanse and actually have, you know, like your gallbladder burst. So there are certainly cases where you must go to the doctor or you must go to an urgent care facility um, if you are having basically extreme abdominal pain where you cannot get comfortable no matter what you do or if you notice that you're starting to become jaundiced, like the whites of your eyes are turning kind of yellowish or your skin looks extra yellowish, it means you are not excreting that, that detoxifying bilirubin and it's building up in your bloodstream and it's actually coming through your skin. Or if you're having excessive vomiting or nausea that prevents you from eating anything at all, these are not the reasons why you're going to be doing a gallbladder flush. You're actually going to go to the doctor. If you have mild or just kind of, you know, uncomfortable symptoms that you can get through and you notice day by day that it's getting kind of annoying, then this is the direction that you want to go. All right. So. There's a couple of things that you want to do in order for the gallbladder and the bile to expel these gallstones. Um, you need to relax your digestive tract. So being stressed out is not going to help you. And I actually think that that was one of my biggest problems at the time is that I had been under a lot of stress because of my health condition uh, related to my heart and not to my gallbladder. But I wasn't able to relax my digestive system and I was like a ball of nerves all the time because I didn't know why I was, was you know, not feeling well for some of the other reasons. So one of the first things you need to do if you're thinking about doing any sort of support for your liver and gallbladder is to relax. Um, and you can do this through a lot of different lifestyle measures, um, taking an Epsom salt bath, um, getting a massage or a lymphatic massage, getting abdominal massage, doing deep belly breathing in and out through your nose, which is one of the best tools you can have for activating um, your nervous system, right, to help you kind of be in that non-fight or flight activation. Um, but Epsom salts, just as good as they are for taking a bath, can also be used um, to kind of help get your, your body ready, taken internally. I know that sounds kind of weird. You're thinking like, Sarah, you've been telling me to take Epsom salt baths forever, and now you're actually telling me that I should drink Epsom salt water, and I'm actually saying yes. So they actually make little capsules of Epsom salts, and you can kind of start to take those in the days leading up to maybe doing a gallbladder cleanse to help relax your internal muscles and help to relax that digestive system so that you can release and let go of those gallstones. So you can just find these at the natural food store, health food store. Or you can buy them online. They're just called Epsom, Epsom salt capsules. Um, and you just want to start with one and kind of work up to where you realize that you have, you know, actually started to have looser stools. And that would be um, where you stop. For me, it only takes about five of those um, per day. And I only did it for a few days before I did a gallbladder cleanse. Um, okay, so the other thing that we need to do is we actually need to help the body really activate the bile by giving the body a large dose of fat. So I just told you that it could be hard to digest fat, and I also just told you that it might not feel very well digesting fat, and now I'm telling you that I eat a lot of fat. But in the process of actually expelling those stones, you need to give your body something really big, like a big signal, like here it comes, the big fat is coming to get your gallbladder working. So remember that all of your digestive processes start up in the brain, right, to send that cascade of signals down into your body telling which organs 
that they need to get ready and what they need to do. So when you consume a big, what we call like a fat bomb or a fat blob, I've heard, um, this actually gets the body ready to go. Hey, the brain says, gallbladder, you're on. This is your day. You've been waiting for this. So um, you're going to be taking the Epsom salt capsules to help relax the digestive system, relax the digestive system, and then you're going to be taking this big fat bomb to be like gallstone or gallbladder, get ready. This will allow gallstones to safely pass and go out into the small intestine and leave through your stool. So um, one of the things that I also suggest adding in to a regimen would be some black walnut. Now, black walnut is typically used um, as both a liver sort of support herb, but also it can be really good um, to have for if there's a potential for any type of pathogenic stuff going on. By pathogens, I mean bacteria or viruses or even parasites that might be going on in the digestive system, which has maybe complicated the picture a little bit more. But black walnut really helps to kind of get the digestive system all on board and it really helps to support this process. It is not okay to take black walnut though if you have a nut allergy. So black walnut is also found in either tinctures or capsules and pretty easy to take. And um, I will give you some more directions on that in just a second. Okay, so you're going to have your ingredients. Um, I typically recommend that you do um, some of the relaxation techniques at the beginning for several days before you actually start doing the liver and gallbladder cleanse. So that means that you're doing deep breathing, you're doing maybe a massage, you're doing some Epsom salt baths, and starting very slowly with the um, Epsom salt capsules or even magnesium citrate capsules um, for a few days in advance. Like I said, for me, I noticed that at five, my stool was looser. I felt kind of more relaxed in my abdomen. That seemed to do the trick. So um, on the day that you decide that you're going to do your cleanse, you're going to increase your dose of the basically the magnesium, um, which, is the, what's, which is what is in Epsom salts. Um, you're going to increase it and take some, maybe you're going to skip dinner. You're going to take a dose at the time you would normally eat dinner, and then a couple hours later, um, you're going to take an, a second dose, and then you're going to have your fat bomb, which usually is... Um, the couple tablespoons of olive oil, okay? You could also do coconut oil, but I sort of just prefer the olive oil. Okay, so basically you start the day with just a light, no-fat breakfast. So something like oatmeal or um, like a muesli, or you could even have just a fresh fruit and vegetable smoothie but don't add any fat to it. Then for the rest of the day, you're going to drink lots and lots of water. You will not eat, um, so you'll be fasting, um, and you'll be giving your digestive system a little bit of a break. That's really important. Um, you can just do this on a weekend when you can just stay home, when you can, you know, Netflix and chill, um, and you've got your bathroom close by. So, okay, at 6 p.m., as I said, you're going to take your first dose of the larger dose of the Epsom salt capsules or the magnesium citrate capsules. Um, and so this is going to be like, if you found in the days before that you worked up to say like 15 or five, excuse me, not 15, you're, you would want to double that to 10. Okay. And then, um, don't, don't go anywhere after you take that first dose, just drink a lot of water and relax. And then at 8 PM, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take 10 more Epsom salt capsules. And then at 10 o'clock, you're going to prepare your fat bomb and you're going to basically mix some olive oil and maybe a little bit of sweetener because that kind of helps to get it down. Um, you're going to be actually using a lot of olive oil, which is up to a half a cup. If you are a large person, um, if you are a you know tall, um, more athletic build gentleman, you will definitely want to go with a full half cup. If you are a petite, thin lady, then you are probably going to do more like a third of a cup. So you kind of want to measure that depending on your size, because if you take too much, it could make you feel very bad. And then the other thing you're going to add to it is some grapefruit juice. And I would prefer that you actually could get fresh grapefruit juice, you know, like get a grapefruit from the store and then juice it on a juicer. You'll need just a little bit of that, um, maybe like the juice of one grapefruit. What that does is it helps to kind of do that same sort of thing. It emulsifies 
the fat so that it can get into your body and be really small and it can go straight to where it needs to go into the gallbladder. So you're going to add these ingredients, which is your sweetener, your olive oil, and your grapefruit uh, juice, and you're going to put it into uh, like a water bottle or a shaker cup or a, lit, a jarred, um, a lidded jar. And you're just going to shake it up and then you're going to drink it. So um, yeah, so the grapefruit juice and a little bit of like pure maple syrup or maybe just a little bit of honey will really help it to um, taste better. <laughs> it's, can you imagine what that tastes like? Um, once you've mixed your fat bomb, your grapefruit, olive oil, maple syrup drink, um, then you're going to wash it down with some water. Okay, so you're going to try to um, take a lot of water and then you can add your black walnut tincture or capsules, um, which will help to sort of be like, liver, you're okay, we've got this, let's help to kind of cleanse and, and clean out. So after you've finished that and you've had some water and you are resting, actually just go to bed. Do not do anything. Don't do cleanup. Don't do anything. Just go to bed and lay down and stay there because you want to try to be in a horizontal position for really a long time to get your body in again that relaxation mode um, and to also to try to fall asleep um, and see if you can just let your body totally go um, into that very very supported um, you know non fight or flight uh, nervous system mode where you are not thinking about anything you are not doing anything. Um, you may actually find that you wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and that is great. You will actually want to probably experience a little bit of the runs. You may get a little bit of diarrhea and it usually should hit you um, by morning time. Um, so usually around uh, the morning time when you wake up, even if you've already had one bowel movement, you're going to take another dose of your double Epsom salts or magnesium salts, magnesium capsules, um, to give yourself just a little bit more of a flush um, in that relaxation to kind of get things moving through. Be sure you're drinking lots and lots of water and definitely um, take a look into the toilet. I know that sounds kind of nasty, but you want to actually check to see because if you do have um, gallstones, usually you will see them floating um, in the bowl after you have done this type of a flush. So um, make sure you're close to the bathroom for the day following your fat bomb. And um, on this day following your flush, then you can start to incorporate fresh pressed juices or organic bone broth or some very, very um, lightly um, like pureed and cooked vegetables. So nothing complex, nothing with a lot of starches or fibers, nothing with fat, nothing with heavy protein. Um, and you just kind of want to spend that morning just taking it easy. Think about like if you've had a colonoscopy, you can't eat before you have the anesthesia and then you can't um, have anything to eat for a little while um, until you get home. So that's kind of the way I like to think of doing this. So by the afternoon or evening, you should feel pretty good again. And you will know if you've been able to release gallstones, even if you don't see them in the toilet, um, because you will feel differently and you will feel so much better. You will actually feel lighter. You will feel, um, you know, like you are better able to eat uh, again and not have some of the same symptoms and some of the same discomfort. So, um, if you've done this once successfully and you feel pretty certain that you were able to get rid of some gallstones, then you may want to wait for about another month and then you can do it again. So these are sort of the nuts and bolts of doing a gallbladder and liver flush. And the reasons why, again, is because it is relatively easy to expel these smaller stones and they, they do not require surgery and they do not require the removal of your gallbladder. Um, it is important to keep your gallbladder so that you can continue to properly digest fats so that you get proper fat assimilation and also fat soluble vitamin absorption and assimilation in your body and also to help balance and keep your other hormones in check because of that healthy you know component of what dietary fats do for our hormones okay so this is a primer and again this is information and education, but this is not a prescription, and this is not a diagnosis or a cure for gallstones, but it helps to give you some ideas for ways in which you can try some remedies at home, 
some ancient remedies, some grandma remedies that have been for around uh, have been around for a very long time and that are approved by your board certified holistic nutritionist um, as a way to support the best detoxification of your liver and gallbladder that you possibly can. So I hope this has been helpful and interesting and informative. Talk to your doctor, see what they say. And, uh, you know, unless you're requiring surgery with one of those big guys in there, just give it a try. Thanks for checking out today's video. And please check out some of my other detox videos for more information. And I will be back with more videos soon. Take care. See you later.